on World News Tonight. Missile Crisis The United States and ROK fire missiles in a continued retaliation after North Korea's missile launch. Emergency Request Donald Trump requests the SCOTUS to send seized documents back to Special Master for review. Deal Back On Elon Musk makes a U-turn on deal pullout decision. Tonight, find out what the company has to say. Island Days Tourists take a special look at the picturesque French Riviera and the island of Belle en Mer. This is Other There in a World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. As, as we begin, South Korea and the United States fired a total of four Army Tactical Missile System missiles toward a mock target in waters east of the Korean Peninsula in response to North Korea's ballistic missile launch the previous day. This comes after South Korea dropped two joint direct attack munitions the day before in a show of force to deter further North Korean provocations. South Korea and the U.S. each fired two ATACM surface-to-surface missiles toward waters east of the Korean Peninsula in response to North Korea's intermediate-range ballistic missile launch the day before. Seoul's Joint Chiefs of Staff announced Wednesday that they precisely hit a mock target in the East Sea, which demonstrated the Allies' capabilities to deter further provocations from the North. It also said the tests showed that Seoul and Washington are capable of striking North Korean launch sites precisely. The military added that it's closely monitoring the situation to be ready for any additional launches by the North. This comes after the Allies also held a bombing drill on Tuesday evening, involving four South Korean F-15K fighters and four American F-16 warplanes flying in formation. One of the South Korean aircraft dropped two joint direct attack munitions that hit the uninhabited island of Jikdo, located off the west coast of South Korea. This type of weapon is effective in precision strikes. The South Korean Air Force's F-15K fighters took part in a precision bombing training where they fired two air-to-surface joint direct attack munitions toward a fake target on Jikdo, an island located in the West Sea. Following the North's missile launch, South Korea's Defense Minister Lee jong sop held phone talks with his U.S. counterpart Lloyd Austin, where they agreed that the regime's provocation is a clear violation of U.N. Security Council resolutions. Seoul's defense ministry said the two officials also reaffirmed commitment to strongly respond to any kind of threats by North Korea, through ways such as deploying U.S. strategic assets on the Korean Peninsula. The United States called North Korea's latest firing reckless and pledged to continue action to guard international security. The EU also condemned the missile launch. China expressed hopes for a balanced resolution through dialogue. Dangerous and reckless is how the U.S. described North Korea's missile launch. The U.S. National Security Council issued a statement Monday local time denouncing the latest provocation. Spokesperson Adrian Watson said it demonstrated the North's blatant disregard for U.N. Security Council resolutions and international safety norms. She also said National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke with Japanese and South Korean counterparts about appropriate and robust joint and international responses. The European Council also spoke up. Charles Michel, the president of the EU, tweeted that he strongly condemns North Korea's deliberate attempt to jeopardize security and that such an action was an unjustified aggression and blatant violation of international law. He also made clear that the European body stands by South Korea and Japan. Belgian Foreign Minister Haji Labib also tweeted about standing in solidarity, calling the latest firing ill-advised, dangerous, and shows a total disrespect for international rules. An expert said South Korea, the U.S., and Japan will now look to the U.N. Security Council to deter North Korea's threats. But he also said that any action may be insufficient with two major powers backing up North Korea. Russia has not yet officially reacted to the launch, but China did in a written interview with Yonhap News Agency. China's foreign ministry said that it hopes for what it called a balanced resolution through talks and negotiation. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said that his forces were making rapid and powerful gains in southern Ukraine and that they had retaken dozens of villages from Russia this week. 
there were multiple scenes reported like this on Tuesday of Ukrainian soldiers raising flags as President Volodymyr Zelensky announced major rapid advances against Russian forces and the freeing of dozens of towns in the south and the east. In a Tuesday nighttime address, Zelensky said, quote, This week alone, since the Russian pseudo-referendum, dozens of population centres have been liberated. These are in Kherson, Kharkiv, Luhansk and Donetsk regions. Russia proclaimed the annexation of those regions last Friday after holding what it called referendums, votes that were denounced by Kiev and Western governments as illegal and coercive. In Kharkiv, Ukrainian soldiers filmed themselves after retaking the village of Borivska and Drivka. Here in Kherson, one soldier raised the flag shouting, Glory to Ukraine! with similar scenes said to have taken place in other areas of the region. The videos are all said to have been filmed on Tuesday. Reuters has verified the locations in the videos, but could not independently verify the date. Ukrainian forces retook several villages along the strategic Dnipro River on Monday, according to Ukrainian officials and a Russian back leader in the area. In the east, Ukrainian soldiers have been expanding an offensive after capturing the town of Liman in the north of Donetsk. Meanwhile, Russian forces in the Donetsk and Kherson regions have been forced to retreat in recent days and seem to be struggling to stop an increasingly Western-equipped Ukrainian army. U.S. President Joe Biden told Zelensky in a call on Tuesday the U.S. would provide Ukraine with $625 million in new security assistance. In a decree on Tuesday, Zelensky formally declared any talks with Putin impossible while leaving the door open to talks with Moscow if it got a new leader. The Kremlin said that what it calls its special military operation in Ukraine would not end if Kiev ruled out talks, adding that it takes two sides to negotiate. President Vladimir Putin, who rules the world's biggest nuclear power, has repeatedly cautioned the West that any attack on Russia could provoke a nuclear response. Reports say that Russia has dispatched a convoy of vehicles from the unit in charge of the country's nuclear arsenal, including claims that the convoy is apparently making its way to Ukraine. Will Russia use nuclear weapons? President Vladimir Putin has warned he's ready to use nuclear weapons to defend Russia amid the war in Ukraine. Putin cautioned it was no bluff. And the U.S. and NATO are taking him seriously. I've been clear myself, President Biden has been clear, our administration has been clear, that there is a risk, given all of the loose talk and the nuclear saber-rattling by Putin, uh, that he would consider this, and we've been equally clear about what the consequences would be. We have communicated that directly to the Russians. Moscow's nuclear doctrine allows for a strike after, quote, aggression against the Russian Federation with conventional weapons when the very existence of the state is threatened. By claiming 18 percent of Ukraine as part of Russia, the threat increased, as the Kremlin could cast any attack on those territories as an attack on Russia itself. Some British newspaper reports suggest Putin may already be planning a nuclear test on Ukraine's border. The Kremlin dismissed that as, quote, nuclear rhetoric. Putin controls the world's largest nuclear arsenal, including a new generation of hypersonic weapons and smaller tactical nuclear weapons. Russia has 5,977 nuclear warheads. The U.S. has 5,428. China has 350, France has 290, and the United Kingdom has 225, according to the Federation of American Scientists. Tactical nuclear weapons, usually a device used on the battlefield, have much smaller explosive power than the strategic nuclear warheads. They could be launched by sea, air, or land, though their effectiveness is a matter of debate among military experts. Alternatively, a weapon could be detonated over a remote, unpopulated area or a body of water, like the Black Sea, as a chilling demonstration of intent. Radioactive fallout would be limited to around half a mile. And we're fully prepared to defend it. I want to say this again. America is fully prepared with our NATO allies to defend every single inch of NATO territory. Every single inch. So, Mr. Putin, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Every inch. 
NATO and the U.S. have not detailed publicly how they would respond to a Russian nuclear attack on Ukraine, but Washington says it spelled out to Moscow the catastrophic consequences that would follow. Options include a non-military response, a conventional military response throwing Washington or NATO into a direct war with Moscow, or a nuclear strike risking serious and immediate escalation. Former U.S. President Donald Trump is making an emergency appeal to the Supreme Court in hopes of sending the hundred classified documents seized from Mar-a-Lago to go back to the special master to review. Former President Donald Trump asked the U.S. Supreme Court to intervene in his fight with the Justice Department over classified documents seized from his Florida home as part of a criminal investigation into his handling of government records. Trump on Tuesday filed an emergency request asking the justices to block part of a lower court's ruling that prevented a special master from vetting more than 100 documents marked as classified that were among 11,000 records seized by FBI agents in August. In Tuesday's filing, Trump's lawyer said the special master, also known as an independent arbiter, should have access to, quote, determine whether documents bearing classification markings are in fact classified and, regardless of classification, whether those records are personal records or presidential records. The court-approved Mar-a-Lago search was conducted as part of a federal investigation into whether Trump illegally retained documents from the White House when he left office in January 2021, and whether Trump tried to obstruct the probe. Investigators want to know who accessed classified materials marked confidential, secret, or top secret, whether they were compromised, and if any remain unaccounted for. In Tuesday's filing, Trump's attorney said he had broad authority governing classification of and access to classified documents. The three statutes underpinning the search warrant used by the FBI at Mar-a-Lago make it a crime to mishandle government records, regardless of their classification status. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, Jair Bolsonaro outperformed expectations with his reflection bid, proving that the right-wing wave he wrote to presidency remains a force in Brazil and giving him an opponent, Lula da Silva, three weeks to pursue votes ahead of a winner-take-all runoff. Leftist presidential candidate Lula da Silva appeared to be within arm's reach of victory in the first voting round of the election. Yet with only five points difference, his far-right rival president, Jair Bolsonaro, is in an equally strong position. No time to waste for Lula, as he called a strategy meeting on how to beat his opponent. We don't need to talk to people we already know, people we know have already voted for us, or people we know are going to vote for us. We'll talk to those who don't seem to like us, who don't seem to vote for us, who don't seem to like our parties. It's with them we need to talk. Despite running in second place in the presidential race, President Jair Bolsonaro surprised many after his party won 99 seats in the lower house and 13 in the Senate. With a strong conservative presence in Congress, Bolsonaro tweeted his determination to overtake Lula in the final run. Our opponents have only prepared for a 100-meter race. We are ready for a marathon. We will fight with confidence and with increasing strength, certain that we will prevail for the homeland, for the family, for life, for freedom, and for the will of God. Both candidates will not only have to maintain their momentum, but also convince the 31 million Brazilians who did not vote in the first round to cast a ballot in their favor. Lula da Silva and Bolsonaro will next face each other in a televised debate which could be decisive before the final runoff vote. The Indonesian government has set up an independent team to investigate the stampede at the Kunjuruhan Stadium in Malang, which is one of the deadliest sporting events in the Indonesian history. Indonesian police wrongly used tear gas inside a soccer stadium to disperse rioting fans, according to an internal oversight official with the National Police Commission. Police experts and spectators, along with video footage, suggests Saturday's tragedy, which killed at least 125 people, was caused by a number of factors. 
They include tear gas, an overcrowded stadium, angry fans of the losing home team and locked exits. The officials said there were no orders to use tear gas on the crowd and that it was unclear why some exits had been locked. Spectators said several of the exit gates were locked, causing bottlenecks as fans tried to flee. Football's world governing body, FIFA, bans the use of crowd-controlled gas and weapons at matches. Police have said the decision to deploy it is one of the issues being investigated. With the country in mourning and seeking answers, the spotlight may be on the police, but experts say the true picture is more complicated. Football hooliganism and violence is not new in Indonesia. To preempt risks, the police had banned fans from the rival Persebaya Surabaya side from attending and asked for the match to be held during the day, when policing is easier, according to private football watchdog Save Our Soccer. But SOS also said organisers printed 42,000 tickets for a stadium designed to hold only 38,000. We cannot only blame the police. These are collective mistakes, SOS said. A spokesperson from Arema FC was not immediately available for comment. Indonesia's Soccer Federation has banned two club officials for life over the chaos. Spokespeople for the National and East Java Police declined to answer questions on the security measures, but on Monday, 10 officers were suspended pending an investigation. In yet another U-turn in the Elon Musk Twitter takeover saga, Musk has reportedly agreed to buy Twitter after all. In a letter sent to the social media company, Musk's lawyers said the Tesla CEO will go through with the deal initially made in April. With a trial looming, billionaire Elon Musk said he will go ahead with his original offer to buy Twitter for $44 billion, according to two sources familiar with the matter, possibly ending a messy legal battle and public relations nightmare for Twitter that would put the world's richest person in charge of one of the most influential media platforms on the planet. The news on Tuesday, first reported by Bloomberg, comes ahead of a highly anticipated face-off between the Tesla CEO and Twitter in a Delaware court this month, in which the social media company was set to seek an order directing Musk to close the takeover deal at $54.20 per share. Dan Ives is an analyst at Wedbush Securities. Oh, I think Musk realized that he was going to lose. I mean, this was one where... All odds were stacked against him legally. Musk's proposal would end months of turbulent litigation that damaged Twitter's brand and fed Musk's reputation for erratic behavior. Musk agreed to buy Twitter in April, but later said he would walk away from the deal after alleging that Twitter misled him about the number of bot accounts. Twitter shares jumped more than 12% before trading was halted for the second time. Shares of Tesla also rose amid a broader stock market rally. Twitter and Musk's lawyers were not immediately available for requests for comment. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. At least 13 whales have been found dead along Argentina Patagonia's coast since the end of September. Southern right whales have been found on beaches in the southern province of Chubut in the region of Patagonia. At least 25 reported dead after a bus carrying over 40 passengers fell into a 500 meter deep gorge, after which police and rescue workers rushed to spot to pull out bodies and search for survivors. U.S. job openings fell by the most in nearly two and a half years in August, suggesting that the labor market started to cool as the economy economy grappled with highest interest rates aimed at dampening demand and taming inflation. Britain's Prince William spoke of his much-missed grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, as he called for action to tackle the illegal wildlife trade, saying it was destroying lives and endangering too many species. Search and rescue teams from across the United States have made their way to Fort Myers Beach, a southwestern Florida island, a week after it was slammed by Hurricane Ian. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you with views of the coast of the French region of Brittany, belle on there a picturesque island for all those who want to disconnect. Stay safe and have a good night.